Hello. So we put the hair in. Now it's time to put some clothes on. And uh, if you don't remember, the clothes look like this, a very basic sort of fantasy gear. Um, and we're going to start with the boots. Boots are an easy thing to start with because they are uh, the most clunky of the clothes, which means we don't have to worry about pop through and stuff. What we're actually going to end up doing is overriding these feet entirely. We'll be removing this, these feet uh, and just using the boots. So we have a lot of options as to how we want to build the boots and by and large, rather than extracting from the mesh, we're going to go ahead and build uh, just however we want and as long as it fits over the top of the mesh it'll be fine so we don't have to feel limited to the topology of the mesh here but we are going to want to mirror this uh, where is our mirror function there you are so we're going to be building two entirely separate boots one for each leg obviously and uh, they'll work out fine we're going to go into non-perspective mode, orthogonal mode, just so that we can see a little bit better. So our boots contain uh, a strap across the top. If we look at the, the design of it, there's some kind of large node on the outside. And it's just something I sketched together. It doesn't have any particular meaning. But there's no reason not to put it in, so that's what we'll do here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and extrude out and subtract here. Oop, we got too many. There we are. Subtract here. Let's go ahead and make sure that I've got got to turn screencast keys on. There we are. So I've just created a system for our boots uh, where it's going to be out here. Sorry, I'm trying to select this stuff. I should just pick faces, shouldn't I? Sorry, these here are going to be the faces that have the swell on them and then in here we're gonna have the boot proper and the boot proper comes down like so pretty basic situation now the reason that I have pulled out this particular uh, set is not because this is the perfect place to put various lines uh, but the reason I pulled it down like this is because we're going to be extruding these four plates and the reason for that is because the boot actually has some metallic plates uh, in this location so if we look at the drawing you can see how they got plates running down the, the, the front here and then some more stuff on uh, ironclad stuff on the bottom so we're gonna build those plates in and these plates are going to be a separate part of the uh, um, of the boot so we're going to want to give them their own material or at least their own UV mapping so we're gonna select around the edge of them I don't know why I've suddenly gotten really clumsy oh did that deselect the things we there we are that's better and then we can mark that and that'll give us a seam around that metallic area and of course we can continue down our path but we do have to be careful because we can't just wrap around that ends up looking really dumb instead what we need to do is we need to split the boot uh, along the ankle the way we generally want to do that is by putting a wrinkle in here um, now you can wait for as long as you'd like before putting the wrinkle in but gen generally speaking I find that there's no particular reason to hold off on it uh, and that wrinkle is uh, is going to be, it's not going to be important, but it's going to look better than not having a wrinkle. And then we'll just grab, oh interesting, there's a split here for some reason. I have no idea why this was marked as a seam, but we'll unmark it. And then we will go ahead and grab the forward part of the foot. Which means deselecting everything back here. Like so. Yep, that'll do. And then we can just extrude down and around. Here we're going to have a metal band and then we're going to have the toes. 
It sounds like someone has decided to uh, make loud noises outside of my apartment. I hope nobody minds. So this metal band, we might as well bring it down, like so. And you can see that we have an issue where all, everything here is actually not the right shape for the foot. That's to be expected. We will go ahead and widen it out here. Nope. Widen it. And if we look at it from above, we can see that we need to widen it a little bit more out here. Like so. That's probably a little too much. There's very rarely any worries about accidentally making a boot too clunky. Um, you'd be surprised how clunky you can make boots and still have them look just fine. So I wouldn't worry too much about how much, how close you are to the skin of the uh, of the foot. Feel free to be quite far from the skin of the foot. It'll work out just fine. So we're going to even this out, and this is going to be the core of our sole, the sole of our foot. And bring this up. and you can see that it's not quite the same height as the toe. Well, in actuality, the foot shouldn't be flat, but that's okay. We are not going to worry overly much about that. Instead, we're just going to bring all of this down to the proper height. And, of course, we find that our sole is as... Uh, it needs as much adjustment as the toe of our boot did, but it is more or less correct, and we can bond these pieces together by merging them. And then all we need to do is fill in this toe here. It actually doesn't matter how we fill in the toe because uh, the um, the toe will down here will never be able to see this. If we do see it, it'll just be in passing. So it's almost unimportant how it gets filled, and we can just do it however we feel like. Uh, we don't even have to make sure that the number of, of uh, verts lines up at all. There we go. We have filled in the boot's toe. Now to fill in the rest of the boot is basically more of the same. So we're going to take this, and we're going to... Sorry, I can't get a good camera angle on it. Uh, and we're going to bring it forward like this and you can see how it doesn't quite line up so what we actually want to do is simply mo uh, mesh these together like this like this and like this and then what we can do is we can add in the proper number of cuts which could be as little as one but I think two is better for us at the moment we'll probably go up to three in a little while Yeah, we're going to need a third. Maybe even a fourth. Yeah, I guess we will need four, won't we? There we go. Trying to get roughly the right shape of the foot. It, uh, it really just... You need to have something that looks like a foot, but it doesn't have to be close to the same size as the foot, because the foot itself is uh, quite large, uh, I mean quite hidden by the boot. Sorry if I'm not making too much sense, I'm kind of focusing on this and mumbling along here. So here we can see that we have some extra uh, mesh, and we're going to just close that off with a triangle. But here we could use two more of these guys. And you can see how trying to make that work out wasn't working, so I'm going to bring in these cuts individually rather than try and do them both at the same time and then work them together. And we will just bond all of these together. And if we look, we can see that the uh, upper portion of the boot just does not match this. And we bring that in like so. And now it looks more or less correct. And we kind of want to do the exact same thing over here.
Now in this case, we already have this coming down. We don't need it, so we'll get rid of it. And we will just continue to bond like so. And these guys can't be bonded in the same way, but we do have this. Close that off. We're going to need a loop here. We're going to need a loop here. We're going to need a loop here. And we're going to need a loop here. And obviously, these loops are going to have to be adjusted so that the boot is the right shape and size. And then we can fill in the faces. So the reason that the boot is so much easier than everything else is simply because we don't have to worry about the underlying mesh in the slightest. And that means we can just build something that looks like a boot and we don't really care um, what else might happen. We do want to make sure that the boot looks like a boot though, so we're going to go ahead and bring in some of this so that it looks good. That is more or less boot shaped. And at this point, we want to finish off the boot. Now, uh, you will hear a lot of people talk about how triangles are evil, and that's more or less true, but uh, we don't really care. Here you can see that we are missing one loop if we want to make smooth connectivity. And we actually probably do, so let's add in a loop. There we are. And that way we can just kind of bond these together like so. But that's a little bit too much, so we won't bond that together. We do have a metal facing here, so we're going to want to work that out. And I think that what we'll do is we'll bring it in like this. We'll extend it. There we go. And then we can actually take these outer lines here and bring them in. Oh. There we go. And there is also, if we look, there is also a metalish, platish type thing on the top of the boot. So let's go in and uh, do that as well. Creak, and then shrink it just a little bit. Uh, shrink it in the correct mode just a little bit. And of course, we would like to have all of these properly cut. So that looks correct. Mark the seam. That's already marked. This one needs to be marked. Mark the seam. There we go. We still have these windows in the side of the boot. Now the technically, technically they are two faces, so we could just do this. Um, I have a feeling that's going to bite us later, but we'll go ahead and do that for now because it's okay. And the end result is that we have, oh, we haven't quite finished because we want to put the top of this boot in, oh, in like so, uh, maybe like that. And then we want to extrude down, and then we want to extrude in again. This one will just go straight in all the way uh, because that's where we won't want to see any gaps. Uh, well, we're going to want to have this upper area as its own thing, so we'll mark the seam. And now we will put in the actual um, bit where the, the weird ball uh, thing is attached. There we go. And if we wanted to put a ball here, the best thing to do is to add a new mesh, like a circle. We don't need 16, how about 8? <laughs> Pardon me. go. That is more or less correct. And then we can extend forward here. Happens to be all facing the correct way. That's always nice. Um, we can bring it in like so. And then we can bring it in like this to give it a little bit of a lip. We can bring it in again, like so, shrink it that is, and then we can actually start to bring it out like a gem.
and we can bring out a face like this. Now, using an octo look, look, using this kind of face is not generally recommended. We could actually go ahead and correctly break that up, but it's going to be a tiny thing that no one's going to ever see, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to mark a seam here, and the rest of it already has a pre-marked seam in the form of this edge that isn't actually connected to the boot. So that is what our boots will look like, although we will put a texture on them. So let's go ahead and UV map them. And we have a lot of options as to how we want to UV map them. If we do it just straight up, you'll notice that we have a problem where the boot does something pretty screwy here. And that's because the vast majority of our boot has no seams where we can cut. Uh, however, there are some tricks we can use to make more seams for our boot. And that, Im that involves using these wrinkles that we put in. If we put the seam in the wrinkle, very few people will care. So we'll mark it. And also, we can put a seam around the base of the boot where it merges into the, butt, into the sole of the boot. So mark seam. Now when we unwrap it, you can see that we get something relatively nice. Now this uh, has a lot of, I mean, we'd have to actually paint a proper material to get this to work. But the basic thing we want to do at this point is separate the metal bits off to one side and the not so metal bits off to the other. So here is one of our metal bits. Let's put it over. This is a gem. Uh, this is boot. This is boot. This is metal bit. Pretty sure this is metal bit. I actually am not 100% sure. I guess we can check by simply selecting the faces. Um, okay, so that's metal boot. That's not properly separated, is it? we have a flaw. Let's go ahead and see where our flaw is. And the problem is that we haven't marked some of these seams correctly, so let's go ahead and mark them. We want this guy, and this guy, and this guy. Those guys. Those are all supposed to be marked. Now let's try it again. There we go. So now what we're going to check and see is this uh, faces. Alright, so this is metal makes sense. Move that here. And we do have one more metal piece, and it's this guy here, which you can see has been split up into two because it's part of our seam. You see how uh, I've, I've got, I've selected a lot down here. We actually only care about this portion, so that would be this here. Why do we have a lot of excess stuff attached, and what is it? All right, so it looks like we didn't quite do the seam correctly for this loop. It uh, it didn't when we were creating the seam. We didn't get all the pieces we needed to get because we need to get this, and we did get it on that side. So it was just on this one side we didn't get it. So mark that seam, and unwrap. There we are. So our metal pieces are here. And these guys down here. I mean, can I Alt L these? Uh, or is it Control L? Yeah, I can. Cool. Control L is a good way to just select everything if you don't want to try and figure out which things to click where. Um, so let's go ahead and put the metal down here in this corner since that is a good spot for it. Uh, come on. There we are. Uh, we're just going to stick it in. I'm going to move this a little bit. And now this is the mounting bracket for the gem. Metal there is all just fine. And to be honest, we could try and make it so that none of these cross over each other, but we're just planning to use a fairly flat metal uh, uh, thing, so it doesn't really matter if they cross over or not. There's not going to be any distinctive decorations. We'll just stick them all in this corner and be done with it. This gem, however, we want to stick this somewhere where it's easy to find. So let's grab it and stick it in the upper right-hand corner. And we're also going to go ahead and raise the size up. So what this means is that there's a small amount in the lower right-hand corner, which is metal, a lot that is leather, and a small amount in the upper, le in the upper right that is uh, gem. Now you can actually uh, 
put this out into a an image so we can call this the boot UV and that will give you a guide when you're painting your textures if you choose to paint textures manually but for now let's just go over uh, into our unity engine grind 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 this is a new file and four. Oh, oh it's already been 20 minutes I guess we won't get to the pants today that's fine we'll get to them tomorrow so here are our boots oh there was no N4, I saved it over N3. Well, that's okay. And you can see how they are um, uh, UV mapped, but we don't have a material on them yet. We can put the slime material on them. Ooh, uh, uh, they won't take it. We should probably name these boots something so that we can find them easier. Boots. boots thank you and we can drop the slime material in here and now we've got bright green slime boots or we can drop the hair frond material in and we've got partially transparent boots speaking of which the whole point of the boots was that we wanted to get rid of the feet so if we were to merge this back over so we can see what we're doing so if we were to decide to do that now, and there's no reason not to, all we really need to do is select all of the areas that we don't want. Now, um, try to avoid cutting half loops. So uh, we, rather than getting rid of that portion of the loop, it would be better if we kept it, even though it does include pieces that we're not going to need. And the reason for that is because otherwise animations might start getting a little bit strange. But in this case, that line there actually does come above the cuff of the boot. So we have to save this as well, because otherwise we will have a small gap in our legs. And we'll just delete these. And nobody will ever be able to tell, except for the small fact that our boot is not quite sufficient to contain our calves. Uh, so to fix that up, we're going to going to enter into our boot, put in a cut right here, and then we're just going to drift the back part of this cut back some and out some, turning on the connected proportional editor. There we go. And that ought to be enough. We can also add in extra cuts. We can change the nature of this cut so that it has a little bit of uh, um, feeling to it. It's up to you. You can do whatever you'd like. Now, right now, we don't have this boot bound into our bone structure, and that's because we're going to be replacing the leg bones entirely, and so there's no reason to rush it. Alright, so the other thing worth considering before we leave off here is what we would like these boots to have for their normal maps, and I mean the normal what what sort of normals we would like these boots to have uh, and the reason that's important is because right now the the boot is completely smooth shaded and that includes these metal areas where we have marked a seam the seams are ignored by unity when it comes to normals so in order to fix that up we might want to go into an hero 3 here and change how it calculates these normals we can change it from import to calculate and then hit apply. And you can see how that sharpens up the boots quite a bit. The problem is that also sharpens up random other places on the body if you're not careful. Uh, in this case it doesn't, oh there, see, little teeny nudge on the, on the thumb here. Uh, and and probably some places in the face. So when you're actually performing this thing for Unity's uh, sake, you either have to figure out how to import normals from Blender and then actually put them correct in Blender, or you have to have the body and the shoes in two different files. Whatever works for you, however you'd like it. I think we're going to stick with one file for this, and we'll figure out some kind of import settings that end up working out for us. Uh, for now, that's it. Next time I will build her some pants.